Hey guys, welcome to Sci with Miss I. Today we're going to discuss observations and inferences. Now, you might be asking yourself or wondering, what is an observation? If you think about it, what are we doing when we observe something? When we make an observation, we're using any number of our five senses to gather information. Now, you don't have to use all of them, but you at least have to use a combination of those senses. If you watched my video on the scientific method, you will recall that our five senses are sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. To make sure we understand what an observation is, let's go through and discuss an example of each of those. Using our sight means that we are making an observation with our eyes. When we see lightning strike, for instance, we're gathering information about what the weather is like outside. Our nose allows us to make observations about how things smell. Have you ever smelled fresh pumpkin pie? Or perhaps a flower? Or maybe even a stinky cat? Regardless of whether a smell is good or bad, both allow us to gather information. Our ears allow us to make observations about how things sound. Have you ever heard the sound of fireworks going off on the 4th of July? Or how about a dog barking outside? Or perhaps you've heard the sound of a crowd at a football game when the ref makes a bad call. When we taste different foods, we're able to tell whether something is sweet, salty, or perhaps even sour, like a lemon. These are things that we are able to observe through taste by using our mouth. Have you ever been to the beach on a hot summer day and felt the sand on your feet? Was it hot or cold? Or maybe you have a dog as a pet or perhaps a fish or a lizard. How do they compare to one another? Is one soft while the others are slimy? All of these are examples of observations that we are making with our five senses. Again, our senses allow us to gather information about our surroundings. There are two different types of observations that you have to know. Quantitative observations and qualitative observations. Quantitative sounds like the word quantity. So what is a quantity? A quantity is a number. So a quantitative observation will always have a number in it. For example, there are six students sitting at my table. This observation has a number, therefore it is a quantitative observation. Another example of a quantitative observation is there are 105 books on the bookshelf. There is a number in this, so again, it is a quantitative observation. Qualitative sounds like the word quality. So when you think of qualitative observations, you need to think about the quality of something, like shoes, for example. For you, a good quality shoe may be one that is comfortable or a certain brand. For others, a good quality shoe may be how it looks or what type of traction that the shoe has. Regardless, a qualitative observation is basically a description of the object. We're talking about its physical characteristics in a qualitative observation. Now that we know what observations are, let's discuss inferences. When making an inference, you're going to use your observations and past experiences. An inference is just a guess that you make based on those things. Or in other words, it's what you think is happening. For example, the bell rings at your new school at 315. You hear the bell and you get up to leave class and go to your locker. If this was your first day in a new school, would you know that that bell signaled the end of school? Probably not. However, if your old school had an end of the day bell that rang around the same time, you may have an idea of what it means. That is called a guess based on what you heard, the bell, and what you knew to be true from your past experiences in another school. Remember the lightning we saw in our observation example? What do you think it could mean when there is lightning? If you guess that there may be a storm coming, then that is an inference. 
You used an observation of seeing the lightning and put that together with your knowledge of storms to make a guess about what was going to happen this time. Now that you know all about observations and inferences, I'm going to show you a series of photos that are examples of either observations or inferences. Pause the video after each example to come up with your answer. I will reveal the answers so you can see if you get them correct. Example number one. You're walking your dog in the park and you notice a flock of six birds flying overhead. Is this an observation or an inference? This is an observation. Now that you know this is an observation, what type of observation is it? Is it a quantitative observation or a qualitative observation? This is a quantitative observation because you gave a specific number of birds. Example number two. This beach bug has a pail of water because he is going to use the water to make a moat around his sandcastle. Is this an example of an observation or an inference? This is an example of an inference because you are using an observation to make a guess about what he was doing. You see the bucket of water and assume he's going to use it to make a moat. This is our final example, example number three. If I were to say the Ferris wheel is scary, would I be making an observation or an inference? I would be making an inference. Since an inference is what I think based on my observations, I think the Ferris wheel is scary, maybe because it is really high up. Now you know all there is to know about observations and inferences. Well, okay, maybe not everything, but you are off to a great start in making your own observations and inferences. If you'd like to share some examples not mentioned in this video, be sure and leave a comment below. Also, if you have ideas about other topics you'd like to see me cover or explain, please be sure and leave a comment to share that as well. Until next time, guys, keep on learning.